Hello, my brother and sister. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Welcome to this hope cast from the Fountain of Hope Christian Church. I am Reverend Dr. Charles F. Marshall, the senior pastor. This is a place where we encourage spiritual growth and nurture God's children to take care of self, community, and the world through Christian education, radical hospitality, authentic praise, and worship, and service. This is the day that the Lord has made and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Fountain of Hope Christian Church. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you right now, Lord, for this opportunity to come together one more time in this new year, 20 and 23. Lord, we thank you for all your mercies and all your love and all your kindness. Lord, as we gather together today, Lord, we ask that you would bless the hearer of this program. Lord, you know their needs. Lord, right now, meet in the name of Jesus. Lord, our prayers that something today will bless your people, Lord. Let us, Lord, let us, Lord, all be pleasing to you, Lord, that you may be glorified here today. Lord, that you may be lifted up here today and that your people will be encouraged. Lord, we thank you for all that you do and continue to do. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us turn in our Bibles to the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter, beginning at the 13th verse, where it reads, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but it is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. People do not light a lamp and put it under the bushel basket. Rather, they put it on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We welcome you to Fountain of Hope Christian Church today, and our prayer is that something today will bless you and encourage you on this day. Now, we are so excited for the many praise reports that we've gotten, and even those who are, are going, and we're praying for you, and, and we're just so thankful that God still answers prayer. If you have a prayer request, please send your prayer request to Fountain of Hope ATL at gmail.com or you may mail to Fountain of Hope Christian Church P.O. Box 55039 Atlanta, Georgia 30308 You can also reach us on our website at www.fountainofhopechristianchurch.com As you go to the website you can enjoy and meditate on the daily scriptures that are available each day so that you may meditate on those to grow in your spiritual walk. We encourage you also to use the, the links to the Christian education page on our website. There you will see classes, some are free and some are no or low cost. And we encourage you to look at them and see if there are some opportunities for you to take courses which are led by instructors so that you may grow in your walk, in your path. And those that are on their journey, we will continue to pray with you. If you have any questions, please reach out to us and we'll be glad to work with you and see how we may help. We also have the newsletter which is available on the website, it is actually uh, going, sent out each month. If you'd like to receive this newsletter, please enter your email in this box and hit the button that says subscribe. You'll be added to the church's listserv and you will receive those uh, communications. You're watching us on YouTube. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the button that says subscribe so that you may be notified of these communications that are coming out through the YouTube channel. Again, we join you each week, each week at 7 p.m. on Tuesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a Bible study. 
If you'd like to join us, please let us know. Send us an email and request the URL connection. We'll send it to you and invite you to join us each week as we study the Word of God and grow together. Now, for those of you who are uh, giving, we thank God for you. Those that gave in 2022, your giving statements will be coming out soon, sometime this month. And for those that are giving today, we bless you as well. We thank you for sowing into this ministry. We thank you for what you're giving as these gifts continue to make it possible for us to reach people around the world through this virtual platform. Again, for those that are giving, there are three ways you can give by writing a check and sending it to P.O. Box 55039, Atlanta, Georgia, 30308. You can go to PayPal and use at Fountain of Hope, or you may go to the website, www.fountainofhopechristianchurch.com and give on the website. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you right now for these that are giving, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, Lord, take their gifts, Lord, that are laid on the altar today, Lord. Let them go toward building of your king or kingdom. And Lord, we pray that you would bless the giver. Bless the giver, Lord, the, the one who is laying their treasure on the altar. Lord, that it may return to them 70 and 100 fold. God, we just thank you even for the one who's unable to give, Lord. Lord, bless them today that they may be encouraged, that they may be lifted up today. Lord, and we give you all honor, glory, and praise. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, for this opportunity to come before your people. Lord, let me decrease that you might increase, Lord, that we might hear from you, that we may be encouraged by you, that we may, we may, Lord, go according to your will and to your way. Let the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my strength and my redeemer. I ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us turn in our Bibles to 2 Kings, the second chapter. We'll be reading from the 19th verse through the 22nd verse, where it reads, Now the people of the city said to Elisha, The location of this city is good as my Lord sees, but the water is bad, and the land is unfruitful. He said, Bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went to the spring of water and threw the salt into it and said, Thus says the Lord, I have made this water wholesome. From now on, neither death nor miscarriage shall come from it. So the water has been wholesome to this day, according to the word that Elisha spoke. Today, our message is put salt in it. Put salt in it. Put salt in it. Annie Lennox, yeah, Annie Lennox, some of you know her a Scottish singer who became a popular in 1970s and you know really got popular in the 1980s. And she sang with a band called the Eurythmics in the 1980s. And she had many songs, but one of them stood out entitled Sweet Dreams. And the chorus is kind of catchy, which said, sweet dreams are made of this. Who am I to disagree? I've traveled the world in the seven seas. Everybody's looking for something. Some of you remember the music video on MTV with Miss Lennox singing with the orange hair in a black man suit and, and, and standing in a boardroom. Yeah, but you know, it, it, it was MTV and some of you may have to look up and remember what MTV was, you know, it was 30 years ago. Hey, Amen, yeah. But look, what are you looking for? Nevertheless, it is true that people are always looking for something. Miss Lennox talked about dreams. What, what are your dreams? If you could have anything, what do you want? Where do you want it? The next question is, how do you get it? Today, I want to lay before you a principle that is found in the Old and New Testament, and it has to do with good expectations and good actions. Elisha was a great prophet who had a protege named Elisha. They were moving through Gilgal as Elijah was about to leave Elisha. 
He knew it. Elijah was mentoring Elisha. And the point in the learning is that the learner will one day be able to do as good as the one who is teaching them. Yes, Elijah and Elisha get to the Jordan River and a great whirlwind comes up and Elijah disappears in the whirlwind into heaven, from the whirlwind to heaven. And most of us will die to go to heaven. There are only a few who actually just walked in to heaven with God. But Elijah was one of the few who did not die, but walked into heaven. Even Jesus died before going to heaven. Elisha had asked for a double portion of whatever Elisha had, and Elijah went to heaven in a whirlwind, and Elijah left his mantle. Now, Elisha picked it up. He picked up the mantle, and he went to Jericho, where we find our text today. The people had a problem. Elisha went into and walked into and meets head on this problem. It is his first opportunity to see what he has learned walking with the prophet Elijah, see what he's taught him and see if he knows what to do. It's an opportunity for him to see how God will use him and use what Elijah had installed in him. There is a lesson from this first miracle of Elisha that I hope we get today. The people realize that the water is bad. The land is unfruitful. It's a situation. The water is bad and the land is unfruitful. People cannot live without water and we cannot live long without food. Our bodies need food and water to live and the land gives us the vegetables, and the vegetables also provide the animals something to eat that we may be able to eat the animals. Our bodies are designed to eat food and drink water to live. The National Academy of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine estimate that men need about 15 and a half cups of water a day. Women need about 11 and a half cups of water a day. They see Elisha coming and present this problem to Elisha. If you want good things, you have to put good into it. If you're looking for good things, you have to put some good into it. In the case of this situation with bad water and unfruitful land, put salt in it. Put salt in it. Put salt in it. And so first we want to look at your location is good. Mm. Second Kings Second chapter 19 verse says, now the people of the city said to Elisha, the location of this city is good. As my Lord sees, but the water is bad and the land is unfruitful. The location is good. The people have made an assessment of their situation and have determined that their location is good. Where they are is good. The city is good, even though the people have identified two critical problems with the location. They have come back with an evaluation that says the location is good. First of all, the water's bad. We have heard of cities with lead and water, such as lead and water in Flint, Michigan, while other cities like Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Milwaukee, Michigan, and Baltimore, Maryland, and Phoenix, Arizona, and San Antonio, Texas, are experiencing high levels of lead in their water as well according to Alyssa Scavetta, according to Akasana. People need water for so many reasons. Water is needed by our bodies to live. Water is also needed by our food source, plants and animals, which require water to grow and thrive. The people said the land is unfruitful. The location of the city is good, but the land is unfruitful. And when the land is unfruitful, it is difficult for plants to live, which grow, that makes it hard for the animals to have plants to live and grow, which makes it hard for people to have 
food to eat. And the water is bad. The water is bad. The water is what? Bad. Yes, bad. You can't go any other way around it. It is bad. People need water to live. People need water to live. Now, you have found yourself today in some location, wherever you are, wherever you are meeting us today, since you're meeting us through the internet, you are somewhere, you have some location that you are located. You are somewhere. I don't know how you got there, but the final assessment is that you are in a location and you like to stay and you like to thrive wherever you are. And for all practical purposes, your location is good. You are alive, it's good. Wherever you are, is good. You live where you live and you are dealing with though the issues that are associated with where you live in your community, in your neighborhood, in your town, in your city, in your state, even in your home. Your location is good though. Your location is good, but there's crime in this part of town. Your location is good, but there's traffic in your part of town. Your location is good, but there's economic problems because inflation is rising, unemployment is up, and jobs are disappearing, and life is becoming difficult. But your location is good. You're alive. You're somewhere. Your location is good, but pollution is in the air and the water and even in the soil that you that so that the, when you plant your fruits and vegetables, they are affected. But your location is good. Your location is good. The schools are bad in your community. The, your location is good, but the roads and water distribution systems and the infrastructure, the highways and the byways are what? Trouble. Your location is good, but there's something wrong in where your location might be. What do you do? What, what do you do? How do you change this condition? There is no middle ground around it. Either things are in your community working toward everyone's good or they are not. Some of us learn how to stay in locations when we recognize that God is with us. Remember Isaiah in 42 and 2, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you and through the rivers though they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. Wherever God is, guess what? You'll be all right, wherever you're located. No matter what is going on in your world, God is with us. David said in 23rd Psalm, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy and my cup overflows. No matter where the news reports say things are happening, what you may see, God is with us. And that God, wherever is God, wherever God is located, we are in a good location when we are with God. Secondly, get your salt. Get your salt. Now, the real truth is that we don't like to be around bad situations, bad people or bad conditions. Nobody does. At least most people don't. So what do you do? What, what are your sweet dreams? What do you want to do? What do you expect? The prophet hears their problem and responds in verse 20, says, bring me a new bowl, put salt in it. And so they brought it to him. Salt is a compound that is important to life. Salt is typically sodium chloride, but it can be other things. Salt can come in many forms. Salt is essential to life. As salt dissolves, it breaks into its components. And in this case, we're talking about sodium and chloride. And, and salt is essential for the nerve and muscle functions in our body. Salt helps regulate fluids in our body. Salt regulates blood pressure, the chloride part of the salt, uh, is important to the stomach acid in our stomachs. So the chloride actually is part of that acid that, that ends up to breaking down food so that we can digest them, so that our bodies can use what's in the food so that we might live. Elisha tells the people to get a new bowl and put salt in it. 
Whatever salt they have, pull it together and put it in a bowl. What salt do you have? Uh, if you are trying to make your location better, what are you putting into your community? If you want your home to be better, what salt have you pulled together for your home? If you want your job to be better, what salt have you put together for your job? If you want your town to be better, what salt have you pulled together for your town? Elisha does not tell them to get someone else's salt. He, he doesn't tell them to go borrow salt. He says, bring me a new bowl because it's important. You're in a good location, but it requires that you do something. And guess what? You are the salt. It's time for you to put some effort in your situation, your home, your neighborhood, your town, your state. Jesus breaks it down like this in Matthew 5, 13 through 14. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but it is thrown out and trampled underfoot. Verse 14, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. Elisha had the people to go find what they had, salt. Jesus says, you are the salt. We need to put yourself in the situation. What is it that you can do? What is it that you can do? You may not be able to do everything, but as salt, you can do what salt is supposed to do. To be salt. You have to stay in Christ to be the salt that Christ is talking about. The salt is not sweet. It's not for everybody to enjoy, but salt is salt. And we enjoy it, but we know that it is. it has a purpose. It is savory. Salt has flavor. Salt dissolves and gets into living things. Salt is essential for our nerve and muscle operation. Yes, salt is essential for how we move. Do you think Elijah made the right choice? Yes, he did. Yeah, he said, go get me the salt. Remember, salt is not sugar. Salt is not like everything else. Salt is distinct. Brothers and sisters, important to note that you are the salt of the earth. You are not like everything else. You are true to what God wants you to be. You are not like the earth. You are salt. God is saying to you today, you are salt, not sugar. You are designed to be salt. And if you are a child of God, follow God's commandments and be salt. Everyone may not like you, but you'll be good for the community. Be salt so that God's order will be maintained and or restored. Jesus also says, if you stop being salt, if you stop tasting like salt, if you stop acting like salt, then then you are not good for the ground or good for manure or poop. And I'm sure you can figure out some other words to describe this. God needs you to be the salt of the earth. You need to be the child of God in your home. The rest will catch up later. God needs you to be the Christian in your neighborhood, in your town, your state. God needs you to do the right thing just because it's the right thing. What would happen if there was salt in government? Would there be more policy that actually supports building up people? Would there be policy that is concerned about the health of people? Would there be policy that ensures that people have a decent way to make a living? Would there be policy that makes sure that people get educated? What would happen if there was more salt in our churches? Would there be million dollar investments in people rather than in buildings? that are partially empty today? Would there be programs that built up communities, built up people? What would happen if we invested in people? What would happen if there was more salt in our homes? Would mothers and fathers treat each other better? Would there be peace and love in the homes? Would the children that they are sending to schools act better? The CDC reported that one in five high school students is being bullied on school property. 8% of the high school students had a physical fight on school property. The New York Times reported that this past week, a six-year-old student in Newport News, Virginia, shot and wounded a teacher. We need salt in the home. We need salt in the community. We need salt in our government. We need salt in the lives of the people. So go get the salt. Watch what you say. 
Paul tells us in Colossians, let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer everyone, Colossians 4 and 6. If you are always talking about people, get you some salt in your mouth. Speak kind words, words that build up. Speak words to encourage. Speak words that will help. Speak words that will lift up. If you are always talking about people, it's not helping them or helping you. Let your speech be gracious. Let your speech be kind, courteous, and pleasant. If you're a lying person, then no one will be able to trust anything you say. We, we keep hearing reports of lying politicians who lie about their taxes, lie about their career, and lie about any and everything, and then try to make policy for the people to live. Mm. We need salt. We need salt. Let what comes out of your mouth be good. Let it be salt. Let what comes in our community be salt. Let there be salt in our homes. God wants you to put the salt in it. If it's bad, put the salt in it. So third, I want to talk about putting the salt in it. Amen. Second Kings 21 through 22 says, then he went to the spring of water and threw the salt into it and said, thus says the Lord, I have made this water wholesome. From now on, neither death nor miscarriage shall come from it. So the water has been wholesome to this day, according to the word that Elisha spoke. Elisha threw the salt that the people gathered and threw it in the bad water. The bad water began to go into the ground and they became good water and the land no longer was bad because it had good water. It had good water feeding. And remember that Jesus even said, I am the water, the living water. Yeah, we need some water. We need the good water. We need some salt in it. Back in the day, people used to smoke meat and then cover it with salt. When they covered it with salt, the salt would kill all the bacteria and preserve the meat. Salt draws out the bad water from the meat. Elisha put salt in the bad water and the water became good immediately. The Lord made the water wholesome. The water has been good and continues to be good and be usable. If you're not the salt, then don't try to put yourself in it. It will make it worse. However, if you have Jesus in your life, you are the salt of the earth and you are a light on a hill. And God needs you to be the light in your home. God needs you to be the light in your church. God needs you to be the light on your job. God needs you to be the light in your neighborhood. God needs you to be the light wherever you are to make things in your good location better. You have expectations for things to be good. Well, you need to be the good salt that goes into those situations to help make them better. Let's take a look at the, the situation in Moses. Moses was talking to God and God was speaking to Moses. And in Exodus 30, and he was talking to him about preparing the tabernacle for worship, the place that they worship. Remember that before there was a temple that which was more permanent, the children of Israel worshiped in a moving worship facility called the tabernacle. And God told Moses in verse 22 through 20, 38 to anoint everything in the tabernacle with not just oil, mm, but a mixture of spices, frankincense, olive oil, myrrh, and seasoned salt. Now, God said to use this where I shall with you. It shall be most holy for you. It is regarded as holy unto the Lord. It is not to be used as perfume. If you remember, the frankincense and the myrrh were also gifts that the Magi brought Jesus when he was born, laying in a manger. Yet God is telling Moses to put salt in this mixture of oil and fragrances and senses and spices. Amen. The prophet Ezekiel received instructions from God regarding the altar and the temple that was being, when the temple was being rebuilt. And in Ezekiel 43, 20 through 27, Ezekiel shares these instructions that he received from God about preparing the holy place where offerings would be made to God. And it says on the second day, bring a male goat without blemish to the altar and the priest shall throw salt on them and offer them up as burnt offerings to the Lord. Salt prepares even the offering that is without blemish to be worth or worthy for an offering to God. 
Paul also reminds us in the New Testament in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, if anyone is in Christ, there, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Look, new things have come into being. You become the salt of the earth when you have Christ in you. When you have Christ in you, you become the new creation. If you have not truly accepted Jesus in your life, let Jesus be the salt in your life today. If you have accepted Jesus in your life, it will show up in your walk. It will show up in your talk. It will show up in how you live. It will show up in how you give. It will be, you will be able to stand against the attacks of the enemy because you got somebody who walks with you, who talks with you, and helps you to carry you through. People may wonder why you throw your hands up and give God a wave offering, but, but you know that Christ is in your life. You are not like you used to be. You are a new creature, a new creation. So when you give your praises, you are throwing some salt. Yes. When you speak words of encouragement, you are throwing salt. When you stand and do the right thing when everyone else is doing the wrong, you are throwing some salt. When you are praying in spite of challenges, you are throwing salt. When you sing your song, while the enemy attacks, you are throwing your song, precious Lord. Take my hand, lead me on and let me stand. I'm tired, I'm weak, I'm, I'm lone, Lord, through the storm, through the night, lead me to the light. Oh, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me on. You are throwing salt, brothers and sisters, oh, to make the water that is bad good so that the land may be fruitful wherever you go. Ah, throw some salt. Speak some good words. Throw some salt. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Throw some salt. Ah, give God some praises. Stand up and do the right thing. Even when everybody else is doing the wrong, throw some salt and watch what happens in your home. Watch what happens in your neighborhood. Watch what happens on your job. Watch what happens in your state and in your country. When you are throwing some salt, throw some salt in Congress, throw some salt in your church, throw some salt in your neighborhood, throw some salt in your home and see what God does. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, for, for these that are deciding right now to turn their lives over to you, Lord. They're tired of being sinners and, and on their way to hell, Lord. God, Right now, they say, right now, I yield. I'm tired of living like this. I'm tired of being like this. Lord, turn my life around. I have sinned, yes. But God, I come before your throne and you forgive me. And Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just lift them up to you. Touch them, strengthen them, encourage them. Help them to make this journey. Lord, as they move, in their life, this step for the rest of their life. Put people around them to throw salt in their life, to, to actually give them something, some encouragement, to lift them up, to help guide them, to give them some words from, from you, God. Give them some scripture, Lord. Give praying for them, encouraging them. And Lord, that those, so that they may make this, this journey and those that are already on this journey, Lord, we continue to pray for them, Lord, lift them up, strengthen them, help them to make each day. Lord, and we'll be so careful to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Let us share in this as we remember the, the table that, that God has presented for us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. And you remember that, that God created this, 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 this gift of love through offering his son, Jesus Christ, who, who offered his body and his blood for the our remission of sins. Amen. And so as we remember this, Lord, we just thank you right now for this opportunity to come to your table. We ask that you would bless these sacraments, bless this cup, bless this bread, as we remember the death of your son, Jesus Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, who died 
and rose from the dead, yet sits on your right hand. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come to the table and opening this table to all who may come. We thank you. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. During the season of Passover, Jesus and the disciples uh, went into the upper room. And while in the upper room, he took the bread and he broke it and he blessed it. And he shared it among the disciples. He, he broke and said, this, this bread represents my body, which was given for you. Take, eat. Likewise, he took the cup and he blessed the cup. And he said, this cup represents the blood that was shed for the remission of sins. For as often as you drink of this cup and eat of this bread, you remember my death until I come again. Amen. God bless you. Take a drink. Amen. May God bless you as you remember this, this great gift of love that God gave through his son, Jesus Christ, to the world, to you and to me. Thank you, and may God bless you. Thank you for joining us today in this whole cast. Our prayer is that something was said that will bless you and strengthen you as you make your journey. If you want to join us or need us, reach out to us. Go to www.fountainofchristianchurch.com Now unto him who is able to keep us from home and to present us before his throne with exceeding joy to the only wise God, majesty, dominion, and power.